I'm the pilot. I'm lost. I don't even remember coming here. I went through a portal. I saw this crimson eye. I have to go back. Aboard this ship. This living ship. I built it somehow? Or saved her. If you can hear me. I'm not alone. If I make it back. If I open the portal. Are you ready? I keep finding more anomalies. I can't look away from. I can leave here whenever I want and not show them that you exist. But then you'll never know the wonders I've seen. There once was a Corvax who had an idea. They had, long ago, used their own physiology to change another species for the better. And as he watched a void-born creature moving through the stars, he found himself wondering, could he do it again? So he stopped wondering and decided to find out. This is what he came up with. It doesn't have launch thrusters or a pulse drive. You're not gonna need a wrench to mess around with the internals, but you might need a scalpel and a stronger stomach. This is all a bit different than what you might be used to. And I can't help but feel like I might be perpetually damp from flying in it? Her? And it's funny because I don't mind describing living attributes to inanimate ships, but there's something off-putting about doing it here. Like I might be doing it wrong. And wondering if it's moist in the cockpit starts a whole new line of questions that I'd really rather not get into. But I do think it's important to acknowledge that this ship is a living creature. It responds to touch and is very much aware of your presence. It makes squishing noises and can seemingly communicate. I just thank the Atlas it doesn't scream when I get shot at, or kick me out into space if it's in a mood. It is ideally more than a pet. It's your partner. A creature who has chosen to explore the multiverse with you in return for saving its life. I think. I am by no means an expert in how this species works, but the implication seems to be that you may have had to harvest the souls of a few fellow travelers to give this ship new life, and possibly stolen the organs of a baby to replace the failing ones. It's all surprisingly grim, actually. And honestly, I find it's best not to think about any of it because I really love flying this thing. And I'd love to tell you it's because it's faster or more powerful, but that doesn't really mean anything here. You can upgrade any ship to be just as good as any other, including this one. And while I will say that it's a joy to not have to make my own thruster fuel anymore, that's not the reason I fly it. This is. I simply can't stop looking at it. Which is to say, I don't necessarily think the ship is good looking, but it is different. These sinewy fibers that connect the pieces together are a bit unnerving. I'm generally not inclined to trust anything with antenna, and the way the skin seems stretched and pulled over the mechanical parts makes me a bit queasy if I think about it too much. And yet, I like it. She glows and breathes and waits for me to take her to the next wondrous sunset, or frozen tundra, or whatever the hell's going on here. I legitimately care if she gets hurt, 
and I get protective if somebody lingers by her a bit too long. She is, frankly, unique and personal. This isn't a ship I bought off a junk trader in some backwoods station. I made this. This ship, in some way, is a reflection of me and the things I had to do to get here. And sure, more than likely someone has their own living ship that looks similar, but it's not exactly the same. There is nothing else out there exactly like this. She is one of a kind. If you intend to get your own living ship, well, it's not hard, but it is kind of a pain in the ass. You'll have to earn enough Quicksilver to buy a Void Egg in the first place, and then a lot of travel to go pick something up, to deliver it to another place, to get another thing, to deliver it to another place, to get another thing. All so you can grow the body parts you'll be harvesting later. And then of course the aforementioned soul looting at grave sites. It's tedious, and a bit of an ethical gray area. But I never thought I'd be following in the steps of Dr. Frankenstein either, so that's an interesting experience at least. In the end, the way your living ship looks and handles will be random. Though there are travelers who go to great lengths to make sure it looks the way they want. Depending on what planets you're on, or the system you're in, or how many times you're willing to rewind time and choose not to save the creature dying in front of you. But I'm a sucker for fate, or kismet, or the Atlas programming. That first ship is your ship. There's no other quite like it. And really, that's the point here. It's not about how well it handles, or fights, or if it comes in a certain color. That's not what this place is for. It's about discovering the unique. Warts and all. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button for the algorithm and leave a comment down below with what you want to see next. The soundtrack used here is available on the Patreon for free. And if you're already subscribed, thank you again. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.